Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Full Potential Show. I'm James Rick, and this is your number one non-boring source for personal development. Today on the line, we have Kier Barker. Kier is a professional speaker with an amazing story. He was born with spinal bifida, bifida, a neural birth defect causing permanent damage to the spinal column and nervous system. At birth, doctors at the hospital told his parents they would not be taking him home, but they did. With little feeling in his legs, he could not walk until fitted with leg braces. He developed a severe stutter beginning at age four. His physical and communication reality resulted in many educational, career, and social environment challenges, as you can imagine. He was bullied in school. His doctors indicated that he would be in a wheelchair by age 16. Uh, Employment seemed out of reach, and who would have thought, here, here, Uh, with us today on the Full Potential Show. He does walk without leg braces. He's graduated from Sir Stanford Fleming College. A breakthrough device helps him manage his stutterings. He's become an inspirational speaker. So he's an inspiration to us all here today on the Full Potential Show, sharing his message of inspiring purpose with passion in your life and leaving us with a four-point strategy for how you can start and continue that process. Kier, thank you so much for being on today's show. Thanks very much, James. Gary, it's, it's an amazing it's story. It, it, it's, it, it truly is incredible and inspiring. Talk to me about what you were going through inside. You know, everybody heard the story of what it was like as you, you know, from an external point of view. But what was it like going through this process from the, from the first time you could start remembering that this was your condition? Uh, in school, um, that was not great. Uh, it was a war every day. I, I hated school every day because every day I faced the uh, bullying team. And, and um, uh, that was really bad in the public school. I went to a one room, eighth grade uh, school. So the teacher often tried to help me. And um, that only gave more ammunition to the mm. students. You know, what teacher's pet kind of thing, you know? Right. Yeah, and kids can be so cruel. And as kids being bullied, it seems like the end of the world, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. So Especially when you're there. Yeah, when you're in that situation, it's like you are powerless to do anything yeah. about it. So how long did this go on? When did you finally start, you know, getting out of that, that mode of being, you know, bullied and, and feeling disempowered to, to actually starting to have some power in your life? Well, I went uh, through uh, public school, all through public school like that. I graduated into high school. Things really changed in high school. Uh, 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 number one, it wasn't a one-room school anymore. It was multi-rooms on, on, on two floors. It seemed like a hundred rooms to me. It was a major shock. And uh, things really changed. I didn't have any teasing in high school. Everybody w- uh, uh, was there to support me. Two beautiful blonde girls volunteered to carry my books. Hello? <laughs> and you didn't pay them. No. <laughs> <laughs> and th- this sounds like a very enlightened and interesting high school you went to, Kier. They fought every day. Who was gonna, whose turn it was that day to carry my books? <laughs> that doesn't sound like but a bad deal at all. <laughs> bull- the so- bullying switched from the students to the teachers. Oh, really? <laughs> because they didn't want me to participate in class because of my speech. Ah. So what, what was the big turnaround then, Kier? I mean, was it, was it actually help in the, in the form of medical devices? Was it a mindset shift where you just, you, you, you really made a change in, in how you perceive the world? What was it that really made a difference in a big, big way, given your starting condition and where you are today? Um, I gave up fighting. Mm. I said, I'm just tired. I, I can't fight anymore. And uh, that was coming close to my uh, 60th birthday. And um, a long story, but I uh, got to see a, a speech pathologist. And uh, she uh, suggested... Uh, I try a, a, a little-known uh, 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 device, 
uh, 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 which really works for me. Hmm. And it's right here. And, and it how, looks, how, so how old, how old were you when you, you got this device then? I was 60. 60, 60. Six, six zero. So you've been, you feel like you've been fighting this whole time, all the way up until you were 60? A war. Wow. And what, what was this war? What was the nature of the war? Um, <clears throat> not being accepted. And uh, the war inside me was anger, bitterness, all of those kinds of things. Hmm. Every day. And, and so, I mean, were you angry at yourself? Were you angry at the world, bitter at the everybody. doctors? I mean, who were you everybody. directing this towards? Everybody, I, everybody and anybody. Because you were, it was kind of this why me mentality? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you never accepted your condition. It was always, why is it, why do I have to go through this challenge? Exactly. And then up till when you turned 60, you started to say, I accept the challenge. I just gave up. I was just too, too tired fighting. And what happened after that here? I met this uh, speech pathologist and um, uh, she gave me the opportunity to try this uh, device. I can show it to you. Yeah. It, it, now, this is interesting to me. It's after you gave up fighting that you then discovered a solution to your problem? Yes. That's kind of, isn't that, isn't that a little interesting? Like normally you'd think the more I struggle, the more I fight, the more progress I make. But you're saying when I accepted my condition and stopped fighting with myself, I discovered the solution. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look at it. So it <coughs> looks like I hearing a, but it helps me manage my stutter. Are you, I mean, this is you're seriously like that's seriously it, that's how bad it was for sixty years. Exactly. No joke. No joke. What what does that device do? That's like magic. Um, it it, it is it, it's very uh, technologically advanced. Uh, I'm not a techie. Um, you don't you don't know what to do. You you just know that when I put this baby on, it changes it the way it works. It changes the it way works. I talk. Wow. And excuse my attitude, but that's all I care about. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I, of course. I mean, wow. That's all I can say. And what? Where did this? How did this lady come to know you, and then and then create this device that totally rocked your world? Oh, uh, do we want to go down that story? <laughs> was this the girl that carried your books? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that was my sister. Uh, she phoned me up one day and she wanted to come and see me. And I'm thinking like, okay, something's going on here because uh, uh, normally she would just drop in and say hi. So she phones me up and wants to know if she can come and see me. And I'm thinking something's up. So she came and she told me about this uh, show that she watched on TV where this guy had a stutter uh, similar to mine and uh, he got this uh, this device and um, he stopped stuttering. Unbelievable. So she uh, researched it and found out that there was a supplier uh, to, 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 to Canada uh, and her question was if she made an appointment uh, would I go? Uh, and uh, she had to ask that question because I've been to every speech uh, therapist for years and years and wow. years and I'm not downing speech uh, therapy because it does work for some people but what they were uh, trying for me uh, did not work. Well, it seems to me that it is clearly something going on neurologically. It's not even something that yes. that that it seems like the desire has been there. You've been fighting this battle. The desire has been there. This device, this magical device has made it possible for you to break free of whatever that condition was that caused you to stutter. Exactly. Um, briefly, before we dive into the four points, Kier, 
what is the name of the device and where can folks that have a similar condition go to get something like that? Speecheasy.com. Speech? Speecheasy, all one word. Speech, speech or speakeasy? No, speech easy. Speecheasy.com, S-P-E-E-C-H-E-A-S-Y.com. Right, right. Okay. Right. Wow. All right. So, so Kier, I mean, just it blows my mind. 60 years you went through this and then you've got this, this device. It's like seeing again, isn't it? I mean, like a blind person seeing for the exactly. first time. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. All okay. right. So, so we want to talk about inspiring purpose with passion in your life. Uh, you've got a four point strategy for how people can start and continue this process. Now, uh, we spent some time going through your story. I would like to dive into the, to the four points. Don't mean to rush you on this. Um, but okay. as, as much as possible, I want to cover these four points to help folks who are watching, uh, I- inspired by this, this battle and what you may have learned from it to create purpose and passion in life. Let's go from there. What, what, are, what are these four points that you want to cover today? The first one is dream. Okay. Everybody has to have a dream, and it has to be bigger than yourself. My parents had a dream that I would walk. And they inspired you with this dream that you that you they could inspired you with that dream. Exactly. And if it could have easily gone the other way, you'll never walk. And as a child, impressionable, their their dream, some dreams are better than others. Their dream could have actually made it so you never would have tried. Right. OK, right. They could have uh, 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 they could have accepted what the doctor said and went right along with it. And, and that's an important thing too to recognize that. We, through the power of our words and through the power of our hope and our beliefs, affect people around us, whether we realize it or not. And we are creating good dreams or bad dreams, known as nightmares, based on what kind of vision we're putting out there in the world. Exactly. We have to take responsibility for that. Okay, so that's the first point. What's the second point? The second point is have a plan. Have a plan. My parents had, or my parents found a doctor. Who made a plan for me to walk? So maybe, maybe if you don't have a plan, find an expert who can help you develop a plan. Right. If you don't have a plan, find somebody who can help you make a plan. Great point. Great okay? point. Okay. The plan is no good, just on paper. Mm-hmm. We have to act on it. And is that the third point? So we need to get busy and act on it. Action. Right. Action is very important. Okay, so we've got dream, plan, action, and this is the effort. I mean, this now, I, I you know, I want to get to the fourth point, and then I want to go back to this one and, and, and clarify. I mean, you you obviously were putting a lot of effort into this, and then you know, into into getting to this final wholeness that you felt uh, was possible. Uh, sometimes our even though we're acting on our plans, it doesn't always work out. So maybe this fourth point really touches on that. And maybe not. Maybe we have to go back to it and clarify this a bit more. So what's the fourth point here? What we think about. What we think about is really important. We can think about our obstacles Mm -hmm. and we can shut down Mm -hmm. or we can think about the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And and, and so really it's... uh, What a man thinks about becomes who he is. It, it, because what we think about really puts our perspective in that place. And really, our experience is really all about where we are in our perspective. Right. What we experience doesn't mean where we are physically. It means where we are perspective-wise. Because where exactly. we are perspective-wise or where we are physically affects our perspective. But sometimes we could be in the best place physically. But if our perspective is wrong or our perspective is disempowering, our experience is still going to be terrible. Yes. Okay. I think your thinking uh, becomes your uh, GPS uh, system. Yes. Yes. Your thinking does become your GPS. It guides you. And, and what it guides is not a vehicle. It's not a car. It's not even the physical vehicle, although it does guide that. But it's your awareness. It guides your awareness. And what you become aware of is either pleasurable or painful based on right. your thinking. Right. All right. So so let's go back to these and four my, points. We've got... My fifth point... Uh, I have a fifth point. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Words. Words. Words are important. Uh, going back to that little uh, rhyme that I did, uh, sticks and stones may break your bones. Mm-hmm. Well, think about that. Uh, 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 that's a very uh, hard thing to hear, but think about that. Is that really true? 
Hmm. Not really. Sticks and stones do break our bones, but our words, uh, 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 but our bones can heal. Hmm. Words can <laughs> can be painful for a long time and sometimes forever. Yeah, words do have power and can be very damaging and can be can can create scars that last a lifetime. Yes. So we have to be careful about uh, the words that we use. First of all, to ourselves, because we talk to ourselves and about ourselves to ourselves mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have to be conscious of the words that we use uh, towards others. <laughs> yeah, and and recognize that even though we think our words don't have that kind of impact, they do. Our words yeah. definitely do. Even if somebody doesn't show it, if they put on a good face. In the end, our words truly do impact and affect people in positive or negative ways, depending on the spirit of our intention. That's right. All right, Kier. So we've got uh, the, the five points of how people can start and continue this process. And, and, and very important, that last one. I mean, you more than anybody recognize the power of words uh, right. and, and, and not having that voice for so long to be able to communicate those words. Yes. Um, Let's let's wrap up on the point of uh, you know creating this purpose and passion in your life. What have you found is your passion now? Now that you have these this perspective, now that you've worked through these these five points, my my passion and purpose is to inspire others, so and, that that you can be the person that you were created to be, and live your life to the full potential. Awesome. And what would you encourage as a final point or, or any last uh, message that you want to leave folks with before we wrap up today's show? Uh, uh, that living your life to the full potential is possible. And, and we all have a mission to do that. So that's the dream. We're putting it out there. And, and, exactly. and, and this show is part of the formation of that plan. Right. You've got to do something when you leave this show every day. Every time you watch right. this show, you've got to take action. That's right. And, and your thinking and your words are, are an important part of that process of taking action and making things happen. Exactly. All right, Kier Barker. Kier is a professional speaker that can inspire your audience with purpose and passion. Uh, he's got five points that I think are, are excellent points on how to really implement and make this a reality. You can learn more about Kier at kierbarker.com. He's got more about his story on there and details on how to get in touch. That's K-I-E-R, Barker, B-A-R-K-E-R.com. Kier, again, thank you so much for being on today's show, buddy. Thank you so much, James. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy that you found your voice because you've got an important message. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kier. And everybody who's watching, be sure and subscribe or like The Full Potential Show. So you can get more great insights like you did today. And you can also get access to a lot of the freebies that you'll find only right here on The Full Potential Show. Kier, have a great afternoon, my friend. And thank you again for being on the show. Thanks, James. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Well, that concludes this week's episode of The Full Potential Show, your number one non-boring source for personal development. I'm James Rick, and if you want to get more positive programming for your brain absolutely free on a weekly basis, just visit fullpotential.com. If you like The Full Potential Show, you're going to love The Full Potential Club. What would you like most as a Full Potential Club member? Be two to three times more productive? Do what you're passionate about? Have more energy? Reduce your work hours? Travel the world? Enjoy an amazing lifestyle on a frugal budget? What if you could do them all? James Rick has been there and done it in ways that few people have. For anyone serious about taking their life or business to the next level, you know you've got to do more than just watch. You've got to do. Join James Rick and other like-minded people for an incredible $10 a month at fullpotential.com slash club. Be educated. Be empowered. Be the best version of you. Fullpotential.com slash club. Try it free for 30 days.